If you want to increase your wins out of the opening, you absolutely must be doing this. Just this week, I reached this position in an over-the-board game, playing a higher-rated opponent. Uh, I was black, and my opponent has just played bishop g5, and I knew what to do instantly, because I've already analysed this crucial position. And what I did is immediately push the pawn, uh, and my opponent dropped the bishop back, and within a few seconds, I played this move. I didn't really consider the move uh, for very long, because I've reached a previous position of analysis, I've already analysed this position, and I knew that white could not take this pawn, that black would get a good game if they did. So my opponent waited for a, a few minutes, calculated, and I thought he would drop the bishop back to uh, g3, in which I would play the bishop across to g4, then plan to get the knight onto this square, and have a superior position. But my opponent took the pawn with the knight, and immediately took back, and he took into this position. Now, this could be quite a scary position, uh, you know, with sacrificing the piece for two pawns and exposing the king. But I knew that I was absolutely fine in this position and I quickly just played the move king g7 and after a few more moves, I was just in a superior position. So what do I mean by that? What I mean is going over my own opening repertoire and picking out points of game-changing analysis. So the points where a moves become really significant. You want to be in a position when you're coming across hot points, points of danger where the game can absolutely turn, that you've already identified those, you've already analysed those, and you feel much more comfortable, like I did in this game, just stroking out the correct moves. How do you identify them? I'm going to talk about that now. Even if you've not got an established repertoire, you've just got a few openings that you study a little bit, that's still fine. What you need to do is go through all of those openings and look for the most dangerous, most critical ideas and lines, and the sharpest variations. So here's an example. Let's say you play e4, e5 is black, and the opponent goes into like the four knights game, right, and plays something slow and stuff like that. You might follow those moves and know what to do and look for some basic plans and ideas or drill the lines, but are there any really massively crucial points that's going to absolutely turn the game in that sort of opening? I don't think so, not really. So what you want to do is dismiss that. What about something sharper? What about if your opponent went into the scotch gambit? This used to absolutely kill me as black until I sat down, identified the you know, key areas that were important, studied those a little bit, and then I improved in this area. So, for example, this could be an important point. You don't really need to know this opening, I'm just, I'm just showing you another example. So this position looks quite scary as, as black. You know, what do you do? We are white's just simply threatening this. Let's just play a random rubbish move. Uh, and then forking, obviously, the king and the rook. Looks a bit scary. What's the right thing to do in this position? You could defend it with this move, but actually, black's got this, bishop c5, and if knight takes, then we've got this move. This still looks a bit scary, though, because after the king moves, you take the knight, and then bishop takes uh, with check, picking up the rook. However, the rook is absolutely untouchable, because if bishop takes rook, then we can just play this move, and white has to sacrifice the queen. So. I've identified like a, a position of importance, an analysis point as this one. It comes quite early in the game, which is quite useful. You know, the closer you are to the opening, uh, the more crucial those positions are. And the more common those positions are, the better they are to study. This is different from studying the openings. This is looking through and identifying those points, which are really, really important to, to identify and differentiate between normal moves and normal opening analysis. You're identifying, you know, the top five, for example, dangerous flashpoints for white, top five for black, and you could record those, you could put them in a separate file, you know, you could play over the positions quite a lot, you know, you could set them up to a real board, things like that, and understand the nuances and the subtleties of those positions. So when they do come up in chess games, like mine came up, you know, just this Monday, I was instantly able to memorize that position. I knew I played it before. I was playing a stronger player, but I was very, very comfortable in the game, and that's really important. I just stroked out those moves and got a superior position. So what does this actually look like to you? Well, what I would do is look at your openings and try and find, like I said, the top five, for example, for each colour, and the most common positions and the most dangerous positions. So positions where things completely change around, where you could lose the game out the opening, maybe sharp gambit lines that you come across, but they must be common. It's no good studying some like random position that you're going to get one, one in every thousand games. That's just a waste of your time. You want to be getting 
common features, common positions and patterns. How do you know that they are common? Well, they've come up in your games during online sessions, blitz, rapid play, things like that. You can also go to the Lee Chess database and play around with those positions. I'll show you another one, which everybody must know. If you've ever played E5 to E4, you will definitely have come across this before, and everybody needs to know how to do this, in my opinion, like I said. So you'll come across you know, the knight fork trick, taking the pawn on E4, and forking backwards. And white just gets a better game, especially as white doesn't know the correct move, which is this move, hanging on to the bishop pair. Instead, white will just take, and you get a better position. But what to do, how to improve that position? Well, I would study this as a flashpoint, if you play E5 to E4, and play around with what you want to do. But one line you might want to do, drop the queen, queen back to D6, and you're already better. Right? The computer already likes you by two pawns. Uh, a typical continuation could be castles and bishop g4. You know, there are other moves you can play. This is just an example line. And if h3, you need to know the fish and pole trap as well. h5. And if takes, takes. Black's just busted after this move. So that would be a flashpoint position. I'll show you one more that is an absolutely brilliant one that comes up quite a lot as well. So again, if you play e4 to e5, you will see this position numerous times. Uh, after bishop c4, you play knight f6, and some crazy people like to play this move, because what they want to see is this fried liver thing, which is completely unnecessary for black to go into. You don't have to stomach any of this nonsense at all. Right? What you can do instead is after d5, but this is definitely a flashpoint position. The d5 and pawn takes, the two things you can do, you can avoid all of that nonsense by playing knight a5, which is a mainline position, and go c6, and so on and so forth. But an even better thing you can do is to go into the proper move in this position after d5 and pawn takes is going to the Ulvestad position. Because we'll turn the table on white, wanting to play a silly attack line, we're going to play an absolutely monstrous pawn sacrifice and just launch a fantastic attack. Uh, and this is a definite position that is one of my top two favourite positions in chess uh, after the d3 roy because we get a fantastic attack, and you know we'd stick it back to the white player. This is a sample line, bishop c5 check, the sort of attack you can expect by playing this line. And you know I've studied this position quite a lot. You can sacrifice pawns. It's very easy to play, as I've mentioned in previous videos. You're throwing these pawns forward, and you're just going to checkmate the white king more often than not. Moves like g4, takes. Right, things like this are pretty common. Checkmate, right. End of conversation, what will be checkmate because this is pinned. And I would definitely recommend that. But overall, this video is not about the openings that work for me, it's about the openings that work for you. You pre analyze five positions for black, five positions for white, or even just two or three to start off with. You're going to just get more wins in your games, you're going to get better positions, and you're going to feel much more comfortable out the opening.